There are a lot of book prizes out there and you could spend the best part of a fortnight researching all of them like some kind of irrational, obsessive, book-fixated, B-grade content creator, or you can watch this video where I summarize the best 41 book prizes out there and filter out all the boogers. At the end of this video, I'm going to encourage you all to speak passionately and with capital letters in the comment section and tell me any book prizes that you love, which I missed in this video. Fair warning, I know there's a few of you out there who listen Listen to these videos while doing the dishes, knitting, or practicing your taxidermy skills. There's going to be a few photos coming up of previous winners or recent long lists to help communicate the identity of some of these book prizes. I'm going through the prizes in vague chronological order. Finally, I just want to say that following a book prize doesn't mean you need to read every book nominated. It would be completely unreasonable and very expensive. For most prizes, I simply look up any book or author I am unaware of and read the books I'm interested in. Long introduction out of the way, let's start with the book prizes in January. The Writer's Prize, which was formerly known as the Rathbones Folio Prize, was set up in 2014 by a group of rebel literary enthusiasts who took umbrage at the direction the booker was heading in, thinking it was catering to popular novels at the expense of literary fiction. Hence, they revolted and set up a rival prize. This prizes had a few different structures over their 10-year history. This year, the prize is divided into three categories, fiction, non-fiction, and poetry. This year, a short list of three books in each category has already been announced, and the three winners will be announced in March, as too will an overall winner. The winner gets £30,000, while the category winners receive £2,000 each. The Dublin Literary Award is set up to honour excellence in world literature. There's a lot to like about this prize. Nominations are accepted from public libraries only. Publishers, authors and agents can't nominate. If an agent requests a library to nominate a book, that book will be ineligible for this prize. It is for the nominating libraries and the subsequent six judges to determine the highest literary merit, however they think is appropriate. And I think you can see from the interesting and impressive list of authors associated with this prize that it is focused on high quality and well-rounded works of literary fiction. This is one of the few awards that has a strong identity that also pits translated literature up against non-translated literature. The long list is announced late January, but last year 70 books were long listed, which I love because we see with the booker last year people are saying, where's Demon Copperhead? Where's in memoriam and we don't even know if those books were nominated with 70 that becomes i wonder why nobody nominated those books in late march a short list of up to 10 novels are announced last year it was only six and in may the winner is announced the story prize is a u.s prize for short fiction which includes short stories and novellas three entries are shortlisted in january and the winner is announced in march the stonewall book award is a u.s prize for lgb authors. Five books are shortlisted every January in four categories, fiction, non-fiction, children's literature, and young adult. The winner of each category is announced in February. The Novel Prize is a cool prize run by three small presses, Fitzcarraldo, One Direction, and Giramundo Press. The winner gets published by all three presses. Fitzcarraldo gets the honours in the UK and Ireland, One Direction in the US and Canada, and Giramundo in Australia. Australia and New Zealand. It is run every two years, so you'll have to wait until 2025 for the next edition, but a short list of eight books is announced in January and the winner is announced in February. February. Last year they announced joint winners, which I assume was because they wanted to publish as many books as possible from the shortlist. The Dylan Thomas Prize is for the best young writer aged 40 years or under. A long list of 12 is announced in January. And look at last year's long list. Isn't this fantastic? Some really talented and amazing authors there. The shortlist of six is announced in late March and finally a winner on the 16th of May. Moving on to 
February prizes. The Republic of Consciousness Prize was a book prize for small oppressors, but in 2021 it became two book prizes for small oppressors. Initially it was a UK and Ireland prize, but now it has a Canadian and US prize to go with it. I think it's wonderful that this prize is growing and there is a prize out there supporting small presses. Ten books are long listed in late January or early February, depending on which side of the Atlantic you're on. Short lists of five books are announced in mid-March and the US and Canadian winner comes out at the end of March while the UK and Irish winner at the end of April. This prize can be a little bit experimental and weird but also have just some really solid good books on it. The Sir Walter Scott Prize is a historical fiction prize which is open to authors within the Commonwealth which feels appropriately anachronistic for an historical fiction award. 12 books are long listed in February, 7 books are shortlisted in April and the winner is announced in June. This is such a broad genre. I love this prize because it can pit something very literary up against something very commercial and judge the novels on their craft. The Woman's Prize announced a second prize last year and it kicks off on February the 15th with the announcement of the long list for the Woman's Prize for Non-Fiction, which will follow the same format as the Woman's Prize for Fiction. That is, the long list will be 16 books, the short list will be 6 books, which is announced, by the way, on the 27th of March, and the winner is announced on the 13th of June. These dates are slightly earlier than the Woman's Prize for Fiction, but not very different. So it'll be very difficult for anybody that's trying to read both the fiction long list and the non-fiction long list. One of the interesting things I discovered when I was reading the terms and conditions for this prize is that a book requires the full support of at least one judge who believes the book is a genuine shortlist contender to make it onto the long list. Then again, to make it onto the shortlist, it requires the full support of at least one judge who believes that the book is a genuine contender to win the prize, which I think is a really interesting way of framing the judge's responsibility and how they select the long list and maybe gives us a bit of an insight into the selection process of one of these book prizes. We'll move on to the March prize and we'll kick off with the other woman's prize, the one that we're all familiar with, the woman's prize for fiction. 16 books will be long listed on the 7th of March, 6 books short listed on the 26th of April and the winner on the 14th of June. This is an incredibly popular prize and one of my personal favourites to read. They are just very very good at promoting excellent literature and the sort of literature I like to read. March really is book prize season. The Stella Prize is often called Australia's version of the Woman's Prize. Launched for the same gender equality reasons, it is open to Australian women and non-binary writers writing fiction, non-fiction or poetry and this includes graphic novels and memoirs. Probably the most famous authors to the international audience to have won this prize are Alexis Wright and Evie Wilde. The long list of 12 is announced at the very start of March. The short list of six at the very end of March and the winner at the end of April. The Carol Shields Prize for Fiction is essentially the North American version of the Women's Prize, but just like the Stella Prize, there are a few differences. Again, this prize is also open to non-binary and genderqueer authors. It is only open to Canadian and American authors and short stories are eligible. 15 books are long listed in early March, followed by a short list of five in early April, the winner being announced in early May. The winner of this prize receives a whopping $150 thousand dollars while all shortlisted authors get twelve and a half thousand dollars not a bad one to be nominated for the international booker prize not to be confused with the booker booker prize is the biggest book prize for novels or short story collections translated into english the long list is announced on the 14th of march this year which is expected to be 13 books but it can be 12 and a short list will be announced on the 18th of april which will be six books the winner announced on the 23rd of may even though this is an incredibly similar prize to the booker prize the international booker prize does have its own flavor which i think really accounts for the different 
types of literature that are celebrated by authors who don't speak English as their first language, or at least who aren't writing in English. Uh, the winner of this prize gets £50,000 to be split evenly between the author and the translator. The Jalak Prize is a UK prize for black, Asian and ethnic minority authors. It is a bit of a mixed bag with fiction, non-fiction and poetry all going into the same bucket. Personally, I find this one of the best prizes to follow. The fiction nominations tend to be really good, well-rounded novels. The non-fiction is always engaging and the poetry is rarely available in Australia, so I won't comment on it. I usually love the books on this list, but on the rare cases I don't, they just don't work for me at all and they're very easy DNFs. I've literally never read a Jalak Prize nominated book that I've found average. They are overwhelmingly fantastic. In 2020, the Jalak Prize announced a sibling award for children and young adult books. Everything is announced together March 15th for the long list of 12, April 18th for the short list of 6, and both winners been announced on May 25th. The Lamba Literary Awards are all about championing queer literature. It is open to all books published in English in the US and that includes translated literature or books written by straight people as long as they include queer themes. There is a huge collection of awards each year and categories change from year to year but last year the following prizes were awarded. Lesbian fiction, gay fiction, bisexual fiction, transgendered fiction, bisexual non-fiction, transgendered non-fiction, LGBTQ plus non-fiction, lesbian poetry, gay poetry, bisexual poetry, transgender poetry, lesbian memoir or biography, gay memoir or biography, lesbian romance, gay romance, LGBTQ plus anthology, LGBTQ plus children's book, LGBTQ plus middle grade book, LGBTQ plus young adult book, LGBTQ plus comic, LGBTQ plus drama, LGBTQ plus romance or erotica, LGBTQ LGBTQ plus mystery, LGBTQ plus speculative fiction, and LGBTQ plus studies. That is 28 different awards. So if you can't find something for you, then you're not looking hard enough. A short list of five is announced for each category on the 15th of March, and the 28 winners will be announced on the 9th of June. The Audio Awards take place on the 4th of March, and these are the awards for audiobook narrators. Last year, 26 awards were given out, and it's not very often you see a book prize where Leo Tolstoy, John Grisham, Robert Jordan, Lee Bardugo, Viola Davis, Terry Crews, Stephen King, and Jodie Picoult are all on the winners list. This is another book prize where there really is something for everybody as long as you like audiobooks. The British Book Awards or the Nibbies is a collection of 31 awards. The winners are announced in early March. Interestingly, the shortlists are only announced two days after the winners. Some of these awards are for things such as best marketing strategy of the year, which I doubt anybody will be very interested in, although you never know. There are awards for things like best fiction, non-fiction, debut, and best crime novel, although no other genres get mentioned. I've only got one prize for April, and that is the Commonwealth Short Story Prize, which announces their shortlist in April. Regional winners are announced in May, and an overall winner in June. There are six judges for the prize, a chair, and then five regional judges. The, the regions for this prize are Asia, Canada and Europe, the Pacific, the Caribbean, and Africa. I, I do love how Canada is linked in with Europe. Last year, there were 26 short-listed stories, which I'm sure some of you will note that 28 doesn't neatly divide by five, so I'm not sure how they work that out for the categories. There are only three prizes that I'm going to mention in May, but they're pretty big prizes. The Pulitzer Prize is announced in early May. This is one of two prizes I think argue over who is the biggest literary prize in the USA. The Pulitzer is actually a collection of 23 awards that includes things such as breaking news photography, music and investigative reporting. However, seven of the prizes are bookish. Fiction, drama, history, biography, memoir, 
general non-fiction and poetry. At the same time as announcing the winner, three finalists for each category are announced. And while this is a very prestigious prize, I can't say I'm a fan of this format. It just takes away all the drama of a good book prize for me, this format. The Miles Franklin Award is Australia's major literary prize. 11 or 12 books are longlisted in mid-May, six books shortlisted in late June, and the winner announced in July. The winner gets 60000 Australian dollars. This is an award I always follow. There always seems to be something miserable and completely horrible on the long list which is my catnip. The Orwell Prize, named after George Orwell for his political writing. These are five prizes. Three of them are for journalism, which is outside of the scope of this video, but I encourage you to look them up. They're very interesting. The two book prizes are for fiction and non-fiction. The shortlist is for eight to ten books, and it's announced in May. The winner is announced in June. If you look at last year's shortlist for fiction, I think that's really, really strong. And every title on their non-fiction shortlist sounds absolutely fascinating. I could not find a single prize for the month of June. So that's when you should all be booking your holidays. The Polari Prize is the UK and Ireland's only prize dedicated to LGBT literature. There are two prizes. The Polari First Book Prize, which is for debut authors and has been running for longer than the Polari Prize, which is for everybody who isn't a debut author. One thing that I find really interesting about this prize is that poetry, non-fiction, fiction, memoirs, they all go into the same pot, which makes it extra interesting, but must make it almost impossible to judge. The long list of 12 books are announced in July, short list of six in September, and the winners in November. The Nigerian Prize for Literature is really interesting. It rotates between four categories, prose, poetry, drama, and children's literature. Every year, we have a different category. A long list is announced in late July, a short list in August, and a winner in October. It is one of the 10 richest awards in the world, giving out 100,000 US dollars to its winner. What I love about this award is that in its 20-year history, on three different occasions, the judges just said, Nah, the caliber of books nominated this year wasn't good enough. We're not awarding it. There's no stuffing around with this prize. Nigerian literature has come a long way and there are so many excellent authors and this is one of my absolute favorite regions to pick up books from. The Kane Prize for African Writing is often called the African Booker Prize, but it is an award for the best piece of short fiction by an African author that is between 3,000 and 10,000 words. A short list of five is announced in July, with the winner being announced in October. In August, we see the big one. The Booker Prize is the prize which other prizes are compared to. It is a prize for fiction originally written in English. It has a reputation for being very literary, but... While it is a prize for literary fiction, it's been a long time since anything super literary won. I think it's very similar to the Woman's Prize in how it targets its audience. I think that the books on it are very accessible, although I guess it values techniques more than it does storytelling. Now, the long list comes out in late July or early August. This year will be early August. Short lists in September and the winner in November. The winner receives £50,000, which I imagine will be dwarfed by the amount of money they'll make selling their book. The Kirkus Prize is one of the most lucrative prizes in the world. Broken into three categories, fiction, non-fiction, and young readers literature, they announce their short lists of six per each category in August and their winner in October. To be eligible for this prize, you must have your book reviewed by the Kirkus Review and receive a Kirkus Star. In September, 
September, the National Translated Award for Poetry and Prose begins. It's an American award for translated books. They have two categories, poetry and prose. Last year, a long list of 12 was announced on the 1st of September, a short list of six on the 11th of October, and the winner on the 11th of November. The prose prize had the following languages on their long list. Indonesian, Korean, Hungarian, Polish, Vietnamese, Chinese, French, Swedish, German, Bengala, Tamil, and Malamayan which is not me butchering the pronunciation of Malaysian, but this is a language spoken in the south of India in the Kerala region, closely related to Tamil. The poetry section also had the following languages represented, Greek, Galatian, Japanese, Persian, Arabic, and Northern Sami. So many different languages and cultures represented by this prize. The Scotiabank Giller Prize is the primary prize for Canadian literature. The National Book Awards is the major US book awards, and they feel very coordinated with each other, sharing very similar dates and identities. If I see news about the Giller Prize, I'm looking up the National Book Awards and vice versa. These prizes are just linked for me because I'm always reading them next to each other. Both prizes are awarded to Best Novel, graphic novel or short story collection originally published in English by a Canadian or American author, depending on the prize. It's an early September long list of 12 novels if you're the Giller Prize and 10 if you're the National Book Awards. Mid-October, they halve those numbers to create a short list and the winner for each prize is announced in November. The winner receives 100000 Canadian dollars or 10000 US dollars. I must say the Canadian dollar might not be worth as much, but it ain't worth a tenth of the US dollar. The National Book Award also runs categories for non-fiction, poetry, translated literature, and young people's literature simultaneously to their prize for fiction, all following the same format. While I often view prizes having similar dates as a negative thing, I actually really love the way these two prizes are so, so similar. ALA, the American Library Association, runs a massive collection of prizes, the most famous of which is the Andrew Carnegie Medal for Excellence in Fiction and Nonfiction. Up to 50 titles are longlisted in either September or October across both categories. Last year it was 21 fiction titles and 24 nonfiction. The shortlist of three is announced in November, and the winner has to wait until June the following year to find out if they won, which is a long, long time in limbo. This year, the Berry Pickers by Amanda Peters is currently shortlisted, and this is my Patreon's January book club. If you would like to read with me and some wonderful people from around the globe, why don't you consider signing up? Thank you to all my wonderful Patreons. The JCB Prize for Literature is a prize awarded for Indian fiction, either written in English or translated into English. A long list of 10 books is announced in early September. A short list of five is announced in mid-October and the winner been announced mid-November. India has such a wonderful literary history and is really producing some of the best works of literature in the world, both right now and historically. This is one of my favorite prizes that I have discovered doing the research for this video and I can't wait to follow it this year. On the 5th of October, the Nobel Prize will announce their winner. This is not really a book prize, it's more of a lifetime achievement prize for an author. It's always interesting to see who wins the prize. The authors are not always writing in English and while they can be massively influential in their home countries, they are often flown under the radar in the West. So sometimes you can really learn something special. Spectacular. The Prime Minister's Literary Award is Australia's biggest monetary literary prize. Although it does cover six categories, fiction, non-fiction, young adult, children's literature, poetry, and Australian history. The shortlist of five books in each categories are announced in October, with the winners being announced in November. The Goldsmith Prize is a prize for British and Irish authors that rewards creativity and daring, fiction that often breaks the the mold. 
the 2023 prize was judged by two authors on the 2022 shortlist, Helen Omieme and Maddie Mortimer. Cuddy by Benjamin Myers won the 2023 prize, and previous winners include Ducks Newburyport by Lucy Elman, How to Be Both by Ali Smith, Innovative and Strange Writing Styles. Each one of those books slash authors have. Some people will love this prize and some people will hate it, but this prize definitely has an identity and that, I think, is wonderful. Avoid it or follow it based on your tastes. A shortlist of six is announced in early October, with the winner being announced in early November. The Warwick Prize for Women in Translation is another prize that I discovered researching this video, and it's one that I'm really looking forward to following as well. Last year, 153 books were entered into this prize, which represented 32 different languages. 16 books were long listed in late October, which included books translated from Vietnamese and multiple books translated from Hungarian, Chinese, Arabic, and Italian. A short list of eight was announced in early November and the winner in late November, which is not a lot of time to read 16 books. So I'd really love to encourage the organisers to space it out a bit more if they can. The next October prize, and the last one I'm going to mention for October, is a prize that I don't think is running anymore. That is the Portico Prize. It is a prize run every two years for a book that invokes the spirit of the north of England, run by the Portico Library in Manchester. So normally the long list is released in October, the short list in November, and the winner in January, but we have not had our scheduled long list or short list, and the app application form is still quoting a 2021 cutoff. This is a really interesting prize and I hope to see it announces a comeback because there are some really interesting books coming out of it. In November, the Nero Book Awards, a brand new prize currently in their first year and moving into the space occupied by the old Costa or White Bread Awards, announces their long list. It is for UK or Irish authors. It selects four books for four different categories, fiction, debut, children and non-fiction, which it calls its shortlists. That is announced in mid to late November. Then in late January, we get our category winners announced, and then the book of the year is announced in mid-March. The Aspen Literary Prize is a fantastic sounding award for fiction that illuminates vital contemporary issues, including, but not limited to, gender issues, environmental change, violence, inequality, justice, and issues of religion or race. The the long list of 14 books was announced late November and it includes some absolute cracking titles. There's plenty of time to read this long list. On the 13th of March it's reduced to a short list of five and the winner is announced on the 25th of April. Personally speaking these are the type of books I'm really drawn to reading so this sounds like the perfect prize for me. December. The Victorian Premier's Literary Awards is one of the biggest prizes in Australia. Awards are given in six categories, fiction, non-fiction, drama, poetry, indigenous writing, and young adults and children's literature. Despite it being called the Victorian Premier's Award, it's open to all Australians. A short list of six for each category is announced in December, and the winners are announced in February. The Gordon Burns Prize recognises literature that is forward thinking and fearless in its ambition and execution, crossing genres, pushing boundaries, playing with style and challenging the reader's expectations. A long list of 12 was announced in December, a short list of 6 in January and the winner will be announced in March. The Babalion Prize was unfortunately cancelled this year due to the poor health of the organiser. Hopefully it will be back next year. This award is for authors with chronic illness or disabilities. The examples listed on their website include MS, blindness, dwarfism, cystic fibrosis, and any comparable condition that defines somebody's life. It's open to all genres, and the three previous winners include a 
memoir, a literary fiction novel, and a self-published secular handbook. The long list of eight is announced in late December, a short list of four in January, and the winner in mid-February. The Babelian Prize is a little bit of a sad reflection of what some of the other prizes, such as the Desmond Elliott Prize, are going through. There are so many prizes that are on hiatus or have been cancelled. This, to me, points out the importance of following prizes that you're passionate about, whether they align with your values or you just really like the type of literature they promote. Make sure you talk about prizes. Make sure you buy the books they're promoting. Give them some sort of clout. Shout them out on your channels if you have channels. Spreading the word about the prizes you love is the best way to keep them alive. I had to cut a lot of prizes from this video in order to keep the length reasonable. So remember to comment on this video and include any prizes that I didn't mention that you love. And it would be fantastic if you would subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Bye bye.